There are many things that bring people together in this world. Religion, music, food. But today, we're going to be talking about sports. More specifically, some black athletes who have put their foot and stamp in certain sports areas. Let's go. Sup peeps, my name is Kirby, but you guys can call me Curbs. And this is Kickback with Curbs. We are continuing our Black History Month series. We talked about inventors, musicians, and now we're talking about some athletes. I am focusing on sports and athletes that you might have not really heard about, but they have been making waves and changes and impacts that have allowed for people in the current day to also get recognized and get into the arena. So without further ado, let us dive in. There are four sports that we're gonna be talking for four sports that we're going to be talking about today and the first one is going to be swimming so I don't know about you all but I know how to <laughs> swim thanks to my mom uh, that was something that was very important to her because there, there are a lot of people in the world who don't know how to swim and being someone from Florida which is a peninsula so it's surrounded by water on all three sides like it would be useful to know how to swim so had a touch on swimming. We are starting with Maritza Coricio. She has Puerto Rican descent and African descent, and she was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico. She is also the first record-setting black swimming Olympic. She started off swimming as a treatment for her scoliosis when she was younger, and she got addicted. Her stroke was a freestyle. If you don't know swimming, there's four strokes. There's freestyle, breaststroke, backstroke, and butterfly. Butterfly is hard. But she was in the freestyle arena and she actually helped with the US women's four by one and helped them win silver in 2003. She wanted to inspire other minorities to get interested in swimming. She stated that she might be the first, but she will not be the last. And that has proven to be so as more African Americans and minorities have gotten into swimming. And another person that she paved the way for is a man by Cullen Jones, one of the next black swimmers to be on the Olympic team. If you like swimming or would like to see a little more about swimming, there's a really good movie called Pride that has Terrence Howard in it that is based off a of true events about a black swim team uh, competing more in a white dominant swimming arena. So I'll leave a link for that if you would like, but it was motivational for me when I was a kid and I was also in swimming. So if you'd like to be inspired, let me know. The next sport that we're going to be looking into is NASCAR. And we'll be talking about a man named Wendell Scott. He started off as an auto mechanic during World War II and got fascinated and very much interested in cars. He's from Danville, Virginia, and he started doing local circuits in his area until he was able to receive his NASCAR license. In 1963, he made history by being first in the Grand National Race. He has paved the way for other NASCAR drivers, such as Bubba Wallace, who won the Camping World Truck Series in 2013. There's also a movie about his life, it's more of like a comedy, but it does touch on some of the things, called Greased Lightning that the comedian Richard Pryor is in. So if you wanna see that to get a little more of a sense of what he went through, go for it. Our next sport is cheerleading. Kirby cheerleading is not a sport, they just put up pom-poms and they chance and uh, Cheerleading is a sport. And it is very hard to try to do when I was a kid and I dislocated my shoulder, my left shoulder, uh, which, would have been better if it was my right because then I wouldn't have had to do homework or schoolwork for like two weeks but you know I couldn't choose the uh, arm I dislocated when it comes to cheerleading I really want to like highlight it because it is a very intense uh sport and it's also something that has like world-renowned competitions and when I was a mascot we were also traveling with the cheer team a lot uh and the dance team so it's like you got to see what they do behind the scenes so I really wanted to highlight this and when it comes to the first African-American cheerleader, we kind of got some ties, but it's mainly in 1970 where African-American cheerleaders started to come to light. For example, we have Mary Smith, who was the first African-American cheerleader for the Dallas Cowboys in 1970. Then we have Deborah Lee DJ Jones, who was the first black cheering squad captain for Penn State in 1977. And then I found another individual at FSU who was also around the 1970s. So what I'm trying to say is it, it started culminating around there. But 
I can definitely leave some more information down in the descriptions for you to look into it. Because I tried. I looked. I wanted to give y'all the information, but I couldn't consolidate enough to really see who was the winner. Technically, it's like Mary Smith because of like 1970, but they also didn't give me more information on her. Apparently, cheerleading, at least in this aspect, was not very detailed. But like I said, I'll be leaving more links for you all to explore down below. The next and last sport that we'll be speaking on is wrestling. I used to be really into wrestling as a kid, and you know, we had Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but who was before him? Probably his dad, because his dad was also a professional wrestler, but we're not talking about that. We will be talking about two kind of individuals, the one who actually did it, and then the one who was kind of more credited for it, if you would. So Houston Harris, or Bobo Brazil, is actually recognized for breaking the racial barriers in the wrestling league. He's from Little Rock, Arizona, and stood at 6'6", 270 pounds. Whoa. But it turns out that the first black African-American champion wrestler was a man by Ed Bearcat Wright Jr. His dad, who was Ed Bearcat Wright Senior, don't know why that's hard for me to say. Anyway, his dad was actually also a pro wrestler, but it was Junior or Bearcat Junior, however you want to say it. To be honest, we're gonna call him Mr. Bearcat. It was Mr. Bearcat who, in 1961, won the World Heavyweight Championship when he got or defeated, not got defeated, um, another wrestler by the name of Killer Kowalski. I'll definitely be leaving some of his fighting videos. Granted, they're in black and white, but it's still very much entertaining for you all to look at. And I know there's probably a ton of other African-American or black athletes out there that have made monumental waves in sports for years to come or records that haven't been broken. So if you do know someone would like to share, please feel free to drop that down in the comment section below. All right, my dudes, that's all we have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed these fun facts and tips and maybe even got interested in some of the sports yourself. Again, we went through NASCAR, swimming, cheerleading, and wrestling. But like I said, there's plenty more people who have made impacts in the sports arena. And I will be leaving some more information about that down below. If you like this video and would like to see more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you think I did a good job, give me a thumbs up so I know how I'm doing. But until next time, adios for now. Thank you.